April 15th, 2013, the Boston Marathon bombing happened pretty much right, right in here at the finish line. This is where the first pressure cooker bomb went off, right here, one of the memorials. You can imagine the hysteria and the confusion that was going on. Complete chaos. I mean, this area was packed with thousands of people, thousands of spectators, and unbeknownst to everyone, two brothers, Tamerlan and Jahar Zarnayev, were busy planting bombs that were inside their backpacks in hopes of creating mass casualties and destruction. And that's exactly what happened. Three people were killed, hundreds were wounded. In fact, 17 people lost limbs. There were all these um, fences that were interlocking, so the police couldn't pull them away after that happened. So making the matters even worse. And this right here is the memorial for the very first bomb that went off, planted by the older brother, Tamerlan. This is where 29-year-old Crystal Campbell died. She lived pretty locally. She was a manager of a restaurant. She was so loved by her family and friends that she was a bridesmaid 17 times. She was at the marathon with her good friend Karen. They were watching Karen's boyfriend in the race, waiting for him to cross the finish line when the attack happened. She had massive lower extremity injuries and uh, basically bled to death. Apparently she died holding the hand of her friend Karen, who was also injured in the attacks, but fortunately survived. In fact, she was taken to the hospital for surgeries, emergency surgeries, and in the confusion, I, th I believe the hospital thought that she was actually Crystal because she had Crystal's ID with her. Crystal's family was contacted. They came to the hospital expecting to see Crystal in that hospital bed, but instead found Karen. And at that point, Crystal was declared missing for a brief time before her family found out that she had been killed. So about 12 seconds after the first explosion came the second one and uh, maybe a little over a block to a block and a half up the road here. These bombs were made from pressure cookers and filled with nails and BBs, like small metal bits. And the explosion of these bombs resulted in five days of terror for Boston, followed by a lifetime of mental and physical scars for so many. 26-year-old Tamerlan Zarnayev and his 19-year-old brother Jahar moved to the U.S. in 2002. They are and were of Chechen descent. They moved to the U.S. from, I believe it's pronounced Dagestan, a predominantly Islamic area in the Russian Federation. Originally, it was on a 90-day visa, but the family applied for asylum once they were here, seeking a better life. And in 2007, the family was granted legal permanent residence. The family settled in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Jahar, the younger brother, became a U.S. citizen September 11th, 2012. And uh, his brother Tamerlan was never granted citizenship due to an investigation against him that was actually suggested by the Russian government, the FSB intelligence saying that he was a known follower of radical Islam. In fact, Tamerlan had visited Russia in 2012 for six months or so. According to Russian authorities, he had frequent contact with extremists while there. But while here, the brothers went to great schools and lived an, in a nice area. And obviously there's much more to all of this, but that's the basic story of it. They became angry with the very country that provided a better life for them. Financial support, a good education. Apparently they were motivated by the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And Jahar admitted that they learned to build these pressure cooker bombs on an Al-Qaeda run website. 
So this is the second bombing location. Like I said, a little over a block away. Eight-year-old Martin Richard was with his family. They were watching the race. That second bomb went off right next to them, about three and a half feet away from Martin. His sister and his mother were also severely injured. In fact, his sister lost her leg. She was one of the 17 people who had some limbs amputated. Actually, a double amputee, Jeff Bauman Jr., a spectator who, he was actually the one who gave the description of Tamerlan to the police, who placed the backpack right next to Jeff. And Jeff thought it was, he looked strange, he looked out of place, and he remembered him and gave the police the description. And the other person who lost their life right here was 23-year-old Lindsay Liu. She was a graduate student at Boston University. She's sometimes referred to as Lou Lindsay, but on her grave is Lindsay Lou, so that's how I refer to her as. But, uh, you know, horrible situation. She uh, apparently bled to death within, you know, just mere minutes, possibly even less. She died, she was basically next to her good friend. They both were hit very badly. Um, I'm not really gonna dive into any of these stories of what was going on after the explosions and the horrific uh, situation that these people were put into. Um, but she basically just, she bled to death, basically. Um, she was hit in the legs really badly. And um, horrible situation, she's from China, but her family said she loved Boston so much that they felt like she should be here, buried here. So this is what they did. This is the exact location uh, right in MIT area here where the brothers walked up on Officer Sean Collier. He was sitting in his police car and they basically ambushed him and they shot him six times, I believe, killed him. They were trying to get his gun, but they could not unholster it. They couldn't, they couldn't get it out, so they didn't get his gun at least. And I believe that someone, there was a witness that saw the brothers walking up through this square uh, and came right up to the police car, which was right here. Sean was the fifth of six other siblings, and uh, his family said he always wanted to be a police officer. He studied criminal justice at Salem State University, and an all-around good guy. He donated his time working at the homeless shelter and uh, teaching people how to box, big into helping people and working with people. I'm wondering if this was... Uh a sister. He was born in 86 and this is uh, Crystal. She only lived three days. So this is probably his uh, baby sister. So after the murder of uh, Officer Sean Collier, the brothers carjacked a driver at gunpoint, took his Mercedes from a Cambridge gas station the driver was with them, held with them for a short period of time and then managed to escape or was released. 911, please help, help me, please. They have guns. Where are they? They're in the Hill gas station, Memorial Drive. They're in front of the gas station? Yeah, I just run, I just run, I just go to run. From what I read online, the vehicle had a tracking system in there, so they were tracking the car. A Watertown police officer located the car and um, that's what started the Watertown shootout. So this is where the Watertown shootout ensued. The brothers were also lobbing explosives at the police, basically uh, pipe bombs packed with steel pellets. 
apparently there are still signs of bullet holes and certain things if you look close enough, but I don't know. I think it'd be difficult. These days, I think it would be difficult to find anything like that. Tamerlan was shot and I believe tackled by a police officer and Jahar fled the scene in the stolen vehicle, actually running over his brother in the process. And this is what triggered the lockdown of Boston for about 15 hours or so. They had no idea where Jahar disappeared to. During that shootout, one of the police officers, Dennis Simmons, was hit in the head with some sort of device, explosion device. He survived, but then a year later, almost exactly a year later, he was at the gym working out and then he had a brain aneurysm right there. The doctor said it was from that device that went off. So that lockdown lasted uh, about 15 hours or so and the police really had no idea uh, where the other brother was. He had ditched the car four or five blocks away and uh, disappeared into suburbia. He was gone. A man went out of his backyard to have a cigarette and noticed the boat cover was torn and uh, walked over to it. He could see a little bit of blood on the side. He climbed up the ladder and could see someone inside. And he crept back down the ladder, called the police, and of course, it ended up being Jahar who was injured in there, shot. He had been hit during that shootout and uh, and the house is right here. The boat is obviously gone, but it was right there facing down the driveway like this. And that ended the massive manhunt, the five day manhunt for the bombers, for the brothers. So that's the story of the Boston bombers, the uh, Sanayef brothers. Uh, Joe Sar Sanayef is in prison, federal prison for the rest of his life. And uh, it's a crazy story. It's uh, just unbelievable how evil people can be hurting innocent people for nothing. People that aren't even necessarily from this country. Unbelievable story. Hope you found it interesting. I'll see you in the next video.